Hello everyone, welcome to the next section of the course, Anti-Patterns to be avoided. In this section, we will cover the scenarios where initialising the state using props leads to unexpected results. Then we will discover why mutating the state is wrong and harmful for performance. Further, we will learn to choose the right keys and help the reconciler. Lastly, we will explore the reason about spreading props on DOM elements is bad. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with initialising the state using props. In this video, we are going to see that how initialising the state using props received from the parent is usually an anti-pattern. One of the best ways to learn something is by looking at the code. So we will start by creating a simple component with a plus button to increment a counter. Inside the component folder, we have created counter.js file. Here you can see that the component is implemented using a class. It has a constructor where we initialize the state using the count prop and we bind the event handler. The implementation of the click handler is pretty straightforward. We just add one to the current count value and store the resulting value back into the state. Finally, in the render method, we describe the output, which is composed by the current value of the count and the button to increment it. Now let's render this component, passing one as the count prop. So inside the app.js file, we will pass counter count is equal to one. Let's run this file on the local host. It works as expected. Here, each clicks on the plus button increments the current value. So, what's the problem? There are two main errors. We have a duplicated source of truth. If the count prop passed to the component changes, the state does not get updated. If we inspect the counter element using the React developer tools, we notice that props and state hold a similar value. This makes it unclear which is the current and trustworthy value to use inside the component and to display to the user. Even worse, clicking on plus button once makes the values diverge. At this point, we can assume that the second value represents the current count, but this is not explicit and can lead to unexpected behaviours or wrong values down in the tree. The second problem centers on how the class is created and instantiated by React. The constructor function of the class gets called only once when the component is created. In our counter component, we read the value of the count prop and we stored it into the state. If the value of that prop changes during the lifecycle of the application, let's say it becomes 10, the counter component will never use the new value because it has already been initialized. This puts the component into an inconsistent state, which is not optimal and hard to debug. What if we really want to use the prop's value to initialize the component, and we know for sure that the value does not change in the future? In that case, it's best practice to make it explicit and give the proper name that makes your intentions clear, such as initial count. Let's take an example. If we change the constructor of the counter component, as you can see in this block of code, and then we use it in app.js file by entering initial count, it is clear that the parent only has a way to initialize the counter, but any future values of the initial count prop will be ignored. In this video, we have successfully learned about initializing the state using props.